Hello, everybody, and welcome to Dryer Days Art Studio. I'm Catherine, and I'm so happy to have you here. This is the piece I will be working on today, a nice blue, icy resin geode. So here, getting started, I put down my epoxy sculpt lines, and if you're interested in how I lay those down to use as barriers or boundaries, I will put a link to that video in the description, or you can hit the little I in the top right hand of the video screen right now to go to that video. Prep work is so important when doing these resin geodes, and I really take the time to lay down my barriers where I want them to really think about where I want my colors and come in here and paint them down. Here I'm adding some rocks and stones. All the uh, products that I use you can find in the link uh, down in the description to my Amazon shop, or I do try to list the individual item links as well down there. I get a lot of stuff on Amazon, including this glitter that I'm using here. Some stuff I do find at Michael's and Joann's and even the dollar store, you can find some really cool vase fillers to use as your stones and your texture. I do prefer to use my hot glue gun there. I have used clear Elmer's glue before and that's, that works great too. It just takes a really long time to dry. And with the prep work taking kind of the bulk of the amount of time as it is, I like to have stuff that's gonna dry quickly that I can use uh, pretty quickly here, like laying down this shard glitter. I go in and do a little bit of it at a time and then I can kind of mold and press the glitter down where I want it because that glue is drying so quickly, I'm able to do that. As you might have noticed earlier, I come in with a bristle paintbrush and they're very, very inexpensive. You can get a bag of them at Michael's for like a buck or something. Um, and I do come in and, and brush out the extra glitter, get any of that extra stuff off my board so that I can lay these other stones down and it's not becoming a huge mess. The prep work does take a bulk of the time as I mentioned, but I just love doing the prep work so much. Um, and you can see now we've already got a beautiful piece here before we've even put any resin down. I come in with a clear resin and I do lay it over any loose glitter or stones. In the past, when I don't do this first and I come in with my heat gun to heat up the resin, it can blow the glitter all over the place. And then you have glitter or little loose stones all over in areas that you don't want them. So I do come in first and you don't have to do a heavy coating here. As you can see, I'm just kind of drizzling it. It's, it's sticky enough, it's heavy enough that it's gonna weigh the stones and the glitter down. Because even though we hot glue it, there is some of that glitter on the top that's loose. It's not totally uh, stuck down. So this just helps to do that. You can notice here, I have uh, rimmed my entire edge of the piece with masking tape. I try to use either masking tape or painter's tape, and that is just to keep all my resin on the board while I'm working and not dripping over the sides onto the table. Coming in with some of my resin that I've added paint and tint to, um, I did use a bit of mica pigments, shimmery ones in this. I wanted this to be a very, very shimmery, shiny, glittery piece. So I did use some metallic pigments. Right now I am using a white base tint from Stone Coat Countertops. I love this stuff. You get some really nice lacing and cells from their base tint. And when I use, uh, if I incorporate in an acrylic paint into my resin or when I use that base tint, I only really try to use about a 10% ratio of paint to resin because um, the resin can get very thick if you put too much of a different additive in it. So I try to use very little, which that actually, you know, saves you on paint and other additives, which is nice. And really on this piece here, because I have so many areas of stones and glitter, I don't even end up using that much resin on this. And I did only do one layer. Usually I do come in and do a second layer to give a really nice organic look, but I really liked how this piece had come together. So I'm wondering what you guys think at the very end. Another question I have for you all is I didn't do, I didn't add lines in with my Uni Posca pens like I usually do at the very end. So I just leave it as it is with this first layer of resin. I, I didn't really feel like it needed anything else. So I'm really curious to know what you guys think uh, once this is completed. Again, come in with that heat. I wanted to come in and start popping bubbles because I noticed they were happening where I had originally laid that resin down. I wanted to get moving on popping some of those bu bubbles. I usually come in two to three times with the heat to pop the bubbles and just make sure that you're getting all of that out of your resin.
As I mentioned, this was the only layer of resin that I did. Hit it with heat two to three times, came in after about two hours and pulled that masking tape off and moved it around the edges of my piece. And here it is completely done. As I said, I didn't do any Uniposca lines with my markers, wondering what you guys think. I'm happy with how it came out. I, I kind of felt like it was busy enough that I really didn't need the lines. Sometimes I think the lines can distract from the beautiful organic look of the resin. So I just kind of wanted to leave this one alone, but I'm curious as to what you all think. I'm just showing the close-ups here so you can see too that resin is perfectly in place now. It will not move uh, with the glitter underneath it. Very sparkly, very shiny. I'm happy with how this one came out. It really makes me think of winter coldness, maybe the Antarctic, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and until next time everybody, keep on painting! Thank you.